um, because of June, pursuing your dream, I am here today, and obviously everyone else is here. And the effect that you have on people is, you will never know how many people you affect because of what you do. So thank you. I'd also like to thank um, the partners of our location. Uh, Nicole, who is here, and her husband, John, Karen, and, I mean, I'm sorry, your husband, David, and then Karen and John Perry, who are not here. Um, they are just amazing people, and I just absolutely love and adore them, and they have been incredible to me and my business and everyone else in that location, too. I really appreciate them. And I'd also like to thank my husband, who's been absolutely amazing. <laughs> I moved. Um, and so supportive, and just, you're... You're part of the Sunny Sister Salon as well. Um, so my name is Kristen Oliva. I am owner of Seven Sister Salon. I am actually one of seven sisters. Um, middle child, which if you are a middle child, you probably know like you're one of the different ones out of everyone else. So, um, so the story is on um, November 7th of 2015, my youngest sister, Katrina Nicole Pumes, um, she lost her battle with depression, and um, it took our, changed our whole life of my whole family. Um, but at her funeral, I knew her story was not over, that God wasn't done with Katrina's story. So, um, when I was returning home, my husband and I were driving home to Georgia. And I was sitting there thinking how I was going to handle her loss. Um, I know that a lot of times, you know, obviously when you're a hairstylist, you're very personal with your clients, so your clients know you and you know your clients. And it was very important to me that my clients knew that, you know, I didn't cut their hair a little too short because my sister just died, or, you know, their color is just a little too dark because my sister just died. Like, I wanted to make sure that they knew that they mattered to me and that I was the one client in my chair mattered. And so um, on my drive home, I prayed that God would bless my hands to bless my clients and that he would allow me to be more patient with them, to be more understanding with them and to, um, to grow my talent more than I've ever had before. And so it was just amazing how when I went back I would have a client that after I've been doing their hair for like eight years, and they're like, this is the best cut you have ever given me. And I had so many clients that kept on saying things like that, and they obviously had no clue what I had prayed. Um, and unfortunately, the company that I worked for was a pretty large salon, and there was more stylists than stations. And so, um, because I was... So it was so important to me that I um, took care of each individual client one at a time. I actually increased my time with each client, which to me was a big deal, but that also meant that my income went lower. And so two weeks after I returned back to work, after my sister passed, I lost my station. And so if you're a hairstylist and you ever lose your station, it feels like a demotion. Um, it definitely feels like a punishment, but it's just their way of saying, well, you've no longer earned your own station, now you just have to like float around to whatever station's available. And so that was a very hard thing for me, but I didn't change my focus on my clients. And so I just kept on working hard, and I was proud of that one client in my chair. Um, and a few months later, it was in July, I had gotten in my car. I had one of those days where I just got in my car, and I was just like, God, give me a sign of hope or something, because I don't think I can take this much longer. It's just been very hard in the environment that I was working in, which was very, feeling very toxic. And just literally, just a few miles down the road, I take a corner, and there's a sign that says, Phoenix Lawn Suites now leasing. And I was, you know, God's ironic, so I was just like, Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, Phoenix, there's something significant about that word. You know, you know, I didn't hear that word often. And so um, I actually Googled the word to remember it. And it's, you know, out of the ashes it rises. Something that was thought to be dead and gone, you know, comes alive. Basically hope. 
And I literally said, God, you're so funny. And so I had memorized the phone number on the sign. And, you know, when you're in Atlanta, 5 o'clock traffic, obviously, it's not like you're going super fast. And so I had called Karen. And I was on the phone with her for, I think, almost two hours. And I just shared her my story, my heart, that I love my clients. And it's, to me, it's about the, the client in my chair. And that's the only thing that mattered to me. And she's like, honestly, she's like, I feel like this is this would be the perfect fit for you. And so the next day, I went in for a tour, and it was one of those things where construction was still there. You know, the fountain wasn't even fully developed yet. So if that tells you anything, like, <laughs> you know, there, were, there was no running water or anything. There was just a big hole where the fountain was supposed to go. So if you know anything about like the construction, that should tell you where we were at. And so she just walked me through, just gave me just a visual of where everything would go and everything. And I was just like, wow, this is just really awesome. And at the same time, I also know that I work for a company that if they even get word that you're looking, you are fired, you know. And so I was just very nervous and I was just like, you know, I really want to make sure this is 100% what I'm supposed to do. And so I, I really did pray about it, talked about it with my husband and everything. But in my heart, I was just like, there's something about this, it's just right. And, um, and then I just felt like, I was trying to think of a name, obviously. And then I just thought of Seven Sisters Lawn. I wanted a way. I wanted a way to keep Katrina's story alive. And so I named it Seven Sisters Lawn. And so each sister is a name of a package. And Katrina is the um, the most popular package. She is a root color touch up and a haircut. And so I I technically do Katrina's all day long. And so it's been an amazing thing because obviously I've had the opportunity to share Katrina's story with new clients and clients that already know what's kind of happened. And the amazing part to be able to talk about obviously teenage depression, bullying, which was part of her her, her issue that she was bullied. And it's just a, it's given me a platform that I never thought possible where I'm not like controlled on the kind of conversation I'm allowed to have in my salon. And what's been also, also amazing is how supportive Karen and Nicole have been with um, my business. When Hurricane Harvey happened, I found out that um, they don't, shelters and everything, they don't provide diapers and things like that. And so I decided to do a diaper drive. So I just, I paid for a little Facebook ad thing that just announced to anybody in my area that I was collecting diapers and wipes and I was offering $10 off their services. And I started collecting so many that I had, that Karen and Cole opened up an empty suite so that I could hold all of the extra stuff. And so it's just so overwhelming just to see how many people, and a lot of them weren't clients, and they were just like, I saw your ad, I just wanted to bring something. And so it was just absolutely amazing that uh, as I saw someone walking up with diapers, I was like, oh, but I didn't want to assume it was for me. <laughs> like, for the diaper drive either, you know, you see someone coming in with a gift, and you're like, is that for me? <laughs> and so it was just so overwhelming and so amazing to see how um, just supportive Phoenix was with that. Um, and then um, um, Karen and Cole allowed me to use an empty suite, which was just absolutely amazing. Um, and then the last thing that I have um, as a gift is to honor my mother. My mom's name is Jo Nell. And she was a single mom of the first five of us. <clears throat> and she sacrificed a lot. But the one thing that I did appreciate is that she still took care of herself. She still, you know, it's not like she spent a lot of money on herself or anything like that, but she still took care of herself. And so I wanted something to honor my mom, and so I have what's called the Janelle Award. And a lot of times, it goes, it's something that's unexpected both to me and the person in my chair, but it's, it's, it's like God's telling me, she's a Janelle Award. She needs this. And it's, the idea behind it is, they need a little bit of Jesus and some TLC. <laughs> and so I'm sure there's a lot of times when you know a single mom, and not all of them are, they're not, it's not about being a single mom, um, but it's about a woman who you know who just needs that. Um, a lot of times it's, they're even single, and there was a 13-year-old girl that was at a Jonelle Award. 
but it's just amazing because it's, it's not a freebie, it's not a handout, it's a gift that I feel like God just put on my heart to bless them with that. And so the last thing I want to leave with you is Katrina's verse that she held on to for many years when she struggled with depression and bullying and everything. And it's Psalms 42.5. And it's, oh my soul, why are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? For don't you know, when you put your hope in God, you have yet to praise him, my Savior, my God. Thank you.